2014 financial conference call. Let's take just a quick second look at this first slide, and it'll give you a little heads up on how to do the uh, the uh, webinar and use the console that's to your right if you're not used to using it in the past. You'll see controls over to, to the console that will be on your right. Make sure you have, if you're using mic and speakers, select mic and speakers. If you're using telephone, select telephone. Now, the way the questions are going to be asked on this is going to be interactive online, and you're going to be using this little box over here that you see where it says questions, but underneath is enter a question for staff. Ask questions at any time. It'll be entered into a queue, and at the end of the time when we go in the question and answer section, then you can go ahead and start. Uh, your questions will be answered in the order that they were received. Uh, so let me turn this over right now to uh, John Bergeron, who will give the uh, the forward-looking statements disclosure. Thank you. This presentation includes forward-looking statements as determined by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. All statements, other than statements of historical facts, included in this presentation that address activities, events, or developments that the company believes or anticipates will or may occur in the future are forward-looking statements. Such forward-looking statements involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors which may cause the actual results, performance, or achievements of the company to be materially different from any future results, performance, or achievements expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Such factors include general economic and business conditions, the ability to acquire and develop specific projects, the ability to fund operations, healthcare service demands, changes in healthcare practices, government regulations, and other factors which the company has little or no control. The company does not intend and is not obligated to update publicly any forward-looking statements. The contents of this presentation should be considered in conjunction with the warnings and the cautionary statements contained in the company's recent filings with the SEC. And now I would like to turn the program over to Dr. William Donnerman, our Chief Executive Officer. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Bill Donovan, Chairman and CEO of Spine Pain Management. Welcome to Q3 2014 conference call. With me today, I have Mr. John Bergeron, CFO here in Houston, and Mr. David Spencer, our CTO, who is actually going to be remotely coming into the conference. He is up north. Uh, as we know, our mission of Spine Pain is we're, basic, we're a technology-driven financial services and medical device healthcare solution company. We are focusing on transparency uh, for our SPIN affiliates when they provide necessary and appropriate reasonable treatment. We have successfully developed and continuously improved the quad video halo system. The QVH is, will be the centerpiece of our new video management system being developed by David Spencer. David will speak later and talk more about this. Next slide. Uh, we've seen this picture before, but we're taking the original quad video halo and we're making it much more. David will talk about this but our whole goal is transparency and documentation. Next slide. We have a snapshot uh, and identify the shareholder equity is 5.3 million. Our, work, our positive working capital ratio of 5.4 to 1. We have gross billings that have already been uh, billed and we're waiting for settlement of $13.2 million. As we'll show later in this talk, we have already collected approximately $10 million uh, from the cases, uh, 1,400, uh, correction, 1,400 and some 
1,542 cases. Uh, we've collected approximately $10 million on that. And we still have over 2,400 open cases. Our inside ownership is approximately 38%. And our market of cap as of today is approximately 7.8 million. Next slide. As we discussed in the last, uh, on Q2, we made some significant changes in 2013. We closed all of the clinics in Florida and one clinic in McAllen, Texas, which caused a 70% decrease in revenues to the company as we started 2014. That's a major development. And we're now working to replace these previous clinics with better clinics. Another major development, and very significant to me, was our largest outside shareholder joined the board of directors. In addition, he has guaranteed a $2 million credit facility with Wells Fargo where our interest rate currently is 2.16%. This investor had invested a million dollars a couple years ago, and we were paying him 12%. He agreed to reduce the 12% to 6% on $500,000 if we would then pay back 500000 with the 2.16% line of credit. So we now have a credit facility of $1.5 that's been unused and available at the end of Q3. We're using this to expand the core business and to facilitate David with the development of the QVH. Next slide. As David will tell and discuss, there's new software updates and some significant technology advancements uh, with the Quad Halo. We're developing a robust video management system. With this development, we have uh, appointed David Spencer as president of the Halo subsidiary. We're adding additional parts to the Halo, and with those additional things such as Google Glass, you would then go for FDA approval. At the present, we don't have to. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, David, uh, David has held uh, leadership, leadership positions in both private, private and, public and public sector, focusing on innovation, technology, and business strategy. He's been president of Spencer Media, which was a litigation support company where he was producing day-in-the-life day videos the for injured video clients. I would like I would to like introduce to David now, now and have him and talk about talk what about he's what doing he's with the quad video. Quad video. David? David? Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, with, uh, with my background and, uh, and initially brought on as a consultant, uh, we quickly figured out uh, with looking at uh, what the Quad Video Halo does from a medical standpoint, from a documentation, and then seeing how that uh, transpires over into the litigation arena, I quickly was able to identify um, some major, major points that could be brought to this system that would uh, bring it into, we, I guess we could say, the 21st century, but also leveraging where the market's at right now. Um, with those being said, I focused in on key features uh, that we needed to bring out to give litigators and also doctors and supporting staff uh, these features to be able to utilize uh, during their practice, but also not step on what they're doing. 
Um, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those features we've, we've dug into and done a lot of market analysis, looking for the demand and where applications could expand. And with just diving into the medical side of it, we have found huge opportunities, and uh, we're we're obviously adapting that to the technology as well. Um, with all those components being said, um, we'll move to the next slide. And these are the main uh, components that we've identified with uh, market need. And um, with that market need, it, uh, these are the key features that we are now implementing into the quad video halo. Uh, the unified video aspect of it, what it does is that it's got a, it allows the uh, client or the end user to have an innovate, you know, an innovative uh, client interface, whether that be on the iPad or on the application, you know, on an, in an application with a uh, iPhone and things like that, because everybody has got a smartphone, um, and that gives the ability to have on-demand live and archived views of the procedures right there at the uh, doctor's uh, at the doctor's hands or supporting staff as well but keeping in mind uh, HIPAA compliance and things of that nature, so we've put that in there. The QVH uh, architecture is uh, where you can monitor procedures remotely and also access you know, archive procedures, and you also have the power, the power to monitor um, you know, remote live and recorded procedures. The cameras, you can monitor alarms, you can run procedure reports, and a lot of other features as well while ensuring a timely flow of information with uh, real-time synchronization uh, with these procedures as they take place, uh, that be either in the clinic environment or the operating uh, room environment in the hospital. The other big one is the remote QVH desk. It's a very easily configurable uh, desktop monitor or you can build a state-of-the-art video wall uh, using standard video uh, display panels allowing clinics and also operating rooms to be able to control live and uh, playback video and change video tiles uh, to their workflow practices. The alarm management escal escalation is huge from the standpoint that we can remotely get into every uh, quad video halo system and troubleshoot those failure points before they actually go on stage to do the procedure because we understand the power of the video not just in litigation that's kind of uh, you know they work hand in hand but also um, from a hospital and medical standpoint in the medical industry it allows uh, you know it allows us to troubleshoot that remotely with our tech support department um, where we're, where we can escalate and uh, you know also monitor uh, hardware alarms and systems alert, and that will automatically update our systems engineers, and they can quickly get on it uh, onto the system and uh, remotely troubleshoot it without us having to send out somebody. And uh, obviously, that creates more downtime. And in a surgical environment, uh, that's uh, you know that's not acceptable. So we've uh, kept in on that. And then moving into the uh, litigation arena, we focused in on the video watermarking as well that adds digital signatures to every recorded video frame to ensure authenticity. And that also, you know, that also translates to the video evidence being admissible in court. Uh, next, please. The um, also, the, the remote monitoring, I, I've touched on that, and the quad video mobile is actually what we were talking about with the uh, iPad app and Android devices. That allows you to uh, monitor video feeds and also archive uh, procedures all from your smartphone or your tablet. And the, remote, the remotely monitoring and accessing those systems across all these devices uh, gives you expandability no matter where you are on your location just as long as you have a you know, wireless IP network that's accessible via um, cell signal or uh, if you're you know, in the office or you know, wherever where there's high speed this will have the ability to let you uh, view everything remotely. Uh, the, the bookmark live and playback features is uh, 
really good uh, that we're seeing in the medical arena uh, for peer review and training uh, remotely and things of those natures of procedures. Uh, what that allows you to do is that you can bookmark, uh, personnel can bookmark, uh, you know, key, key events and scenes from their mobile device or there in the OR uh, in the clinical environment as well. Uh, to be able to share them with colleagues later in time and uh, highlight points uh, during litigation as well. So it's a very, uh, a very strong point there. And then it's uh, optimized. It can currently we have successfully tested um, in the clinical environment we, uh, up to six concurrent video feeds on our iPad app and uh, you know, taking advantage of all of the, uh, the tablets, additional real estate that they have to offer and we will be, be expanding the uh, camera feeds. But right now, as we look with, with the market and where it needs six is a, a pretty, pretty good sweet spot, but we're going to continue to expand that. But this, uh, this all goes into, you know, with the UL FDA requirements and all of that, we don't want to kind of shoot for the moon, uh, but we just want to get, uh, get acceptability so we can get this to the market and, and get it sold. But, you know, six cameras, in a clinical and an OR environment is uh, you know, plenty based off of the subject areas that we've designed. So where does all this store at the end of the day? Um, we don't rely on the, the device actually in the OR or the clinic. We don't rely on that uh, device to let all the feeds come in because that would actually create um, a lot of traffic. So with our uh, intelligence sensing uh, software, it will uh, throttle the bandwidth and it uploads it all into a central SharePoint uh, system and that's where uh, end users will be able to access the live video feeds and the archive so it's storing it into um, you know the, the SharePoint database while maintaining the HIPAA and PIP, uh, the PIP requirements so if uh, they need to go back and look at uh, different procedures that have happened within the case, they can log in based off of credentials and uh, they can you know, utilize it that way. Um, I've touched on the app as well, so it, uh, you know, that's all encompassing. So the big thing with the app is that it, you know, as we move into, as, we, as a market as whole, it, you know, everything is app-based now. So it also, it also brings down the footprint of the actual uh, video management system. The, the new Quad Video Halo system uh, that I've developed is about the size of a cigar box and it's literally gone from um, six different components, uh, the equivalent of we'll say three feet high, uh, maybe two feet wide. Now it's down to the size of a uh, cigar box and so naturally the size of an, uh, an iPad or an iPhone it takes up less real estate in a clinic and also in a surgical environment where space is critical in, in that arena. So uh, a lot of exciting things there with combining all these different features. Uh, thank and, you, uh, David. David, thank David, you very David, much. Very much. I'm going to uh, have John, John Bergeron now go over, over the balance, balance sheet and so forth. So forth. Thank you, Dr. Donovan. The slide is very self-evident. I did want to bring a couple of items to you in regards to the increase in prepaid expenses. These are the results of the stock grant that we granted for the debt modification and bringing on Mr. Spencer. This also has a result on the APIC APIC down in the exam section. section. One other so item to look at is that we have $1.5 million on the line, on the line that is still, is still untapped. untapped. Change slides, please. As Dr. Donovan stated, the decision to close the Florida and the McAllen facilities have had a drastic effect on our revenues as noticed in the comparisons between Q313 and Q314. I would like to bring to your attention that in the total 
income statement, there's $250,000 of non-cash expenses included in there. And in the G&A expenses, there's $141,000 that has to do with the continued development and marketing of the quad video halo. We do expect there to be maybe one or two more quarters of additional fee expenses in the opening in the operating G&A, but we do expect sales to commence in the first quarter of 2015. That's our expectation. And with that, I will turn it back to Dr. Donovan. The next two slides uh, will deal with number of cases and procedures, and then number of cases with collections. So this first one, uh, since 2010, we've treated, our affiliated doctors have treated approximately 4,000 cases. And the procedures were a little over 7,000. Next slide. The cumulative cases we see that have settled is 1,542. From those cases, we have collected cash almost $10 million. In that period of time, there have been 94 cases that ended with no collections, costing us a little over $250,000 in cash invested. So we know that a little over 1,500 cases settled, we can collect in cash approximately $10 million. And we need to remember we still have almost 2,500 cases that are still open and are in the process of collection. Next slide. Since uh, inception, the average case settled for a little over uh, 6,000. And as I mentioned, there's 20, almost 2,500 cases that have been pre-funded. So we feel that there's a lot of money that we need to still collect over the next year or so. This gives us clear evidence of the strong cash flow potential from our core business model. Next slide. We want to take what David has developed and to get this into the marketplace because we feel the quad video halo will help us diversify our revenues. So we feel that there is future shareholder value in both the cases that are in the process of settling and the QVH halo that David has really accelerated in development. Next slide. Our goals for 2014 and beyond is to pursue new and recurring revenue overlay of existing business. I mean, that's a given. Number two is to attract new doctor affiliates. And we're talking with three or four different groups at the present time. We need to increase the cash collections and to really get the new generation halo into the marketplace and begin sales next year. This is the end of the formal part of the call. And I'd like to open this up for questions. Okay, the first question is from Ed Wren. 
sorry for this sorry echoing, 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 popping in and out. Uh, uh, the question, the question is, is timing as, 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 to, as to when you expect to get UL, UL and what I've read what here, I've read here un, uh, FDA approval. Well, that's a that's a two, that's a two part question. Right now, uh, with our existing piece of equipment, we don't need FDA uh, approval. Uh, we are getting electromagnetic testing done very quickly with the new pieces that uh, David has put together. When you add special things like uh, Google Glass, that's totally different. And that's when you would have to have FDA because right now we're just recording pictures. But when a doctor starts using Google Glass, which would really pump on our system very well, you now are using this technology to make a medical decision. So that's so totally different, totally different than, what, than what, what we have what we right have now. Right so now. we're so looking we're down, down the road, road. And, and, and David is, David is Google, Google developer, so, so we're talking we're about this and, and we're looking we're down the road, down road that we will have, have this available, available in the future. future. We're not we're right not now. now, and that's why yeah, we're not concerned about the FDA at the present time. Uh, Follow-up uh, follow from Ed Wren, uh, the timing uh, of marketing, when do you expect do you to actually be selling the product? The product? We're pre-selling pre 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 right now, and, and we're looking we're uh, uh, in the first uh, quarter of 15, but we're pre-selling uh, the equipment right now. We're giving demonstrations, and we for, you go from pre-selling to the actual selling. And the pre-selling pre is an important part. We're doing that right now. The All-Star needs all to ask a few yeah, questions here. Yeah, we're running we're out. We're only down to two. two. Uh, Ken, uh, James, Ken James, how soon do we expect to be opening any new centers, centers or satellite centers? Uh, I think uh, we'll have we'll some have new ones, ones uh, by next month. By, uh, I had a hard time hearing that. By next by week next or next week, month? Next month. <laughs> Next month. Next month. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Well, well uh, got some people I asking questions. So I know that system that system works, works but uh, uh, there doesn't there seem to be any questions. questions. I guess we must have done the perfect the conference perfect call, call here. Or maybe just or the, the feedback, feedback is irritating feedback. everyone. Uh, uh, we'll give you all about we'll one, more one more minute if you got any questions to ask. I'd like, in the box on the right side. I would like to thank everybody who took time today. I know it's late on a Friday uh, to hear what we're doing, and especially what David is doing. Uh, we have the R&D part, and we failed to mention it. We have an, a new R&D facility down in Clear Lake near NASA. Uh, where David is working out of assembling units and testing units. And then we have the financial part uh, where we're doing the actual collections. So uh, the new R&D center is very nice, and it, it, it's going to help support the development of the HALO uh, and we're going to see some good results over the next uh, six months to 12 months in the development. David is doing a terrific job. And what's interesting, David understands the needs because he has background in computers. He has background in litigation support where he used to do day-in-the-life videos. So. David understands the need for transparency. And I think we're going to have a better product than what we had a year ago. And next year, it's going to be better than what we have this year. So I think there's 
there's a lot of exciting things happening, and David is an integral part of this. Along, we have a wonderful team here that's able to collect these accounts, and that's what we live on. The line of credit from our board member is terrific because it means we can explore opportunities that we select and we're becoming more and more selective because of the experiences in Florida and other cities. So I think that we're going to continue to grow this company in a careful manner. We have a good board and uh, we're all able to work together. And I thank have, you as we do, have, we, have one, we do have one question here. I okay, did give him one more minute and somebody did ask. So this is actually for David. It says, is there any significant difference between the HALO for the affiliates as compared to the third party? Is David still with That's, us? Is, okay. Uh, sorry, I think the microphone is <laughs> Okay. Got it fixed. Uh, the baseline, the uh, the quad video, the video management system itself. Um, no, there's no difference. the The beauty of it is, is that the way that I have designed the architecture is that it's modulated. So, when as we move into these different applications, we are not going to have to reinvent the the baseline model of the quad video halo. We can uh, plug modules in and out based off of the application need of uh, you know of that particular uh, environment that we're going to put it in. So it's adaptable in any environment. Uh, everything from the hospital uh, down to the clinical environment. If it could be you know in bariatrics to cadaver labs to uh, training facilities all the way to uh, you know obviously up into the ORs of uh, different types of procedures that are going to take place. So that was uh, one of the main things that I looked at with the architecture was being able to have vertical expandability without stepping on what our baseline, um, our heartbeat for the system is. So uh, to answer your question, at, at, a, at a fundamental level, it is uh, the same, but uh, based off application need, it can grow and modulate to those needs. And actually, Dennis had a follow-up here. Uh, one, he had, just has MSRP of, I assume he means, do we have any idea what our MSRP is going to be? And, and I would think you're talking about different ranges from different versions. I guess, Dennis, uh, uh, for David, for that one. Yeah, and we are, uh, we're, we're currently, you know, we're still nailing that down because of, a, again, to kind of touch on that, that modulation question was uh, perfect for this as well is that we are identifying that right now uh, on the baseline system, which we are uh, reducing the cost uh, substantially. And then as we plug in new modules, um, you know, it could be a subscription service, uh, pay as you go, things of those nature. So we're working out that, uh, that price, you know, those price points right now. And he, he's perceptive. One last follow-up from him. What is our raw cost excluding labor? To assemble a, let's say, a middle of uh, the one that you expect to be the most well used, I guess is what he's trying to say here. Was that a you said raw cost in labor? Uh, effectively, the cost not including labor. I guess he means that like the cameras and uh, and building the, the the stand and all the above. Yeah, currently we are uh, with with the hardware. Uh, just the video management system in itself, we are in the uh, anywhere from the twelve to $18,000 range. Not including labor? Uh, that is including labor. That's what I thought. Oh, uh, it looks like, uh, wait a minute, here's, okay, okay, well, a, Martin, uh, my question will be, will you guys ever get anything done or just disappoint like in the last year? And this is from Ager, Martin, I guess Martin Ager. Well, let me answer that. You know, 
when you have 70% of your revenue taken away, you really have to right the ship and get it going. Now, we've accomplished a lot since that happened. We brought on a new board member, a very strong individual. He wouldn't have come on if he thought that there was no future here. Number two, David has come on, and he's developed something. And our price for this product, we're talking because of these new things that David has put in, we're talking around $65,000 per unit. And number three, we're identifying a different kind of doctors to affiliate with than we have in the past. And we're trying to find the best of the best that understand reality. And uh, have we disappointed people? I've been disappointed when you lose 70% of revenue. But you surely don't give up when you have talented people working every day to develop something. And we all need to remember this product that is somebody able to help doctors get procedures done that are needed and to develop a technology that is absolutely needed for transparency. Uh, Health has changed a lot in the last two years. Two years ago, nobody ever talked about videotaping anything. That's all they talk about now. And it's to the point uh, people want to see. We want to see this video. Was it really done? And if it was done, was it done correctly? And what was the response to the patients? And we're getting very positive feedback from patients and other people about this. So yeah, everyone's been disappointed when you lose 70% of your revenue. But let me tell you, you don't fall over dead. You, you find better people, you affiliate with better people, and you grow this company. And we're going to grow this company. And I hope if uh, you've been disappointed, you give us some time and, and, and come back in uh, three or four months and listen to us again. And we go from there. So there can be a bumpy road, but you see this a lot with small companies. But we've been in business now since 2010, and we've collected $10 million in cash. That's a lot of money. So we've been disappointed, but I don't dwell on that. I'm moving ahead, and I hope that you as investors will join us and, and continue and watch us, listen to us, and, and we're, we're working as hard as we can. And we're bringing some more people on board, of both doctors and non-doctors. So we have another question. Some great from, opportunities. We have another question from Kyle. Are you able to expand upon the pre-sale interest from third parties of the Halo product so far? I'm trying to gauge third-party interest in the product. There's significant interest in this product, and that's what people have come back to us and said, "Look." This is what we need. This is what we would like to see. So David has come up with some new things. He's, he's put in a light uh, on the bottom of the halo where it shines down on the operative field. Uh, it's better than the surgery lamps that we have in surgery. It is a high, intense light. That came from a suggestion. And any of the docs who see it, they go crazy over this. Jesus, this is the way it should be. So I think we're getting feedback from the pre-sale of special things that different people need or their wish list. And David is the one that looks at these. And David can come up. He's, he's really good. He can come up and, and solve a lot of these questions that people have. But this uh, high-intensity light, God, the, the light is no bigger than my thumb, 
the tip of my thumb, but you should see the output. It's incredible. So that came as a suggestion. Well, now it's part of the deal. Well, I guess that does it. Uh, we don't have any new well, I'm just wait a minute. There was a question just added. Uh, Uh, this is again from Kyle. With a significant interest in the marketplace, have there been any purchase commitments by those interested parties? Not, not at this point. No one's written a check yet. Has there been interest? Yes. Of course, we're not. We haven't asked for any checks yet, to my knowledge. <laughs> That's correct. We haven't. Uh, well, I guess that does it. It's Friday afternoon, and thank you all so much. And we apologize for the echo. I know what the problem was, but the pro but it wasn't anything to be solved without having one of the or, or two of the uh, people log in and log out for the echo. But uh, we'll we'll make sure it doesn't happen next time. Again, thank, thank you, thank you everyone. for your patience. And you all have a great day. Thank you very much.